Chen Hu smiled at Su San Lang and said, Wasting my time. I've already finished all the work at home today. What trouble can it be if I help you cut some weed? Besides, we've been good friends since we were young. If I don't help you now, I'll be unable to sleep peacefully in the future. Plus, it's been sunny for a few days in a row already. It might rain cats and dogs someday. Sister-in-law just gave birth. She can't be in the rain. Don't say anything. Let's get to work. Chen Hu started cutting the weeds immediately. Su San Lang was so touched that he choked. Thanks. With that, he picked up the scythe and continued cutting the weeds. By sunset, a large patch of weed in this wasteland was cleared. Chen Hu then helped to twist the weeds into ropes and tie up the cut weeds in large bundles. San Lang, when are you going to renovate the house? Do you want to do it tonight? I'll help you weed the grass after dinner. It's a beautiful day and there'll be a moon tonight. Chen Hu told Su San Lang as he tied up the grass. Su San Lang was grateful, but he rejected the offer. He said, Hu, I appreciate your kindness, but you really don't have to help. I can get it done myself. It's not easy for you either. Take care of your own home. Chen Hu's situation was not much better. When Chen Hu was little, his feet were burned and he became a cripple. Although he was the youngest son in the family, his two older brothers were seven or eight years older than him. And he was a cripple, so he was not well liked by his parents. Chen Hu's wife, Madame Qian, was also disabled after being burned when she was young. There were scars on her face, and only half of her thumb was left on one hand. He had two daughters and no sons. He was not in a good place at home. He had been scolded a lot when he came to help San Lang. Chen Hu lowered his eyes and swallowed before saying, San Lang, why do you think our lives are so difficult? In any case, I regard you as my brother. If you hadn't saved me when I was young, I, Chen Hu, wouldn't be alive today. Besides, I've done most of the work that I'm supposed to do. I want to help you and no one can stop me. Chen Hu looked up. His eyes read. He had a disability and was not tall. His parents felt that he was embarrassing and did not like him, but they did not think about who caused his disability in the first place. When he was younger, his two older brothers, who were seven or eight years older, had fought over food, his parents hadn't cared. He hadn't been able to fill his stomach and was lucky he didn't die. When he was young, he was pushed into a river by his two brothers. It was Su San Lang who risked his life to save him. When he was young, he loved to follow Su San Lang around. Su San Lang would give him two bird eggs when he found three and some wild fruits when he picked them. Over the years, they forged a deep and lasting bond. He'd never forgotten it. Looking at Chen Hu like this, Su San Lang found it difficult to refuse. He patted Chen Hu's shoulder and smiled bitterly. As long as I don't die, I'm not afraid. Come after dinner, I'll remember this favor. If there's a chance in the future, he would definitely repay Chen Hu. However, Chen Hu interrupted Su San Lang with a smile and said, I don't want you to pay me back even if you have the chance. I'm the one paying you back in the first place. Chen Hu helped Su San Lang pick some grass. When he saw that the Su siblings had cleaned up the well, his worries about Su San Lang disappeared. Although Su Chong and Su Hua were silly, they were obedient. Su San Lang looked at the well, which had been mostly cleaned. It will be ready for use tomorrow afternoon after another round of cleaning. He stroked the children's hair with relief. Be good, all of you, wash your hands, let's make dinner, dad will bury some chestnuts for you in the fire pit later. Okay, the children nodded happily, and Su San Mei immediately went to help with the fire. At night, they had bacon vegetable soup that did not have much oil in it. They would occasionally taste the minced meat inside. Su Chong, Su Hua, and Su San Mei would never covet what's in the pot. After Su San Lang scooped their portions for them, they ate it obediently and slowly. Occasionally, when they got to the meat, their eyes would light up and they would chew on this little bit of meat. Su San Lang sent the food to Madame Zhao. As Madame Zhao was eating, she said with concern, San Lang, you should go and eat too. Su San Lang nodded, being constantly cared for warmed his heart. He smiled and said, no rush, let me check on Si Mei. Su Xiaolu looked at her father and yawned. Needless to say, she saw the words I love you in her father's eyes. She must be a beautiful and cute little daughter. At this point, Su Xiaolu had never looked into a bronze mirror before, so she naturally did not know that she had not bathed since she was born. There was still some fetal fat on her body, and a layer of it was still buried in her hair. However, this didn't stop Su San Lang from liking her. He liked to look into Su Xiaolu's eyes because they were bright and full of life. Just by looking at them, he could understand what Dr. Wu meant when he said that her eyes had life in them. They were shiny, intelligent, and lovable. Good girl, be good, I'm going to eat too. I'll hug you properly after I'm done. Su San Lang spoke to Su Xiaolu. It was strange for adults to talk to children. After all, children would not understand. Yet, Su San Lang didn't think so. He thought his little girl understood his words. 
When he spoke, her eyes looked at him seriously. She even opened her cute mouth wide, as if she was saying, Oh, oh, I know. Su San Lang couldn't help but smile. Then, he said to Madame Zhao, Darling, call me when you're done eating, I'll go eat. Madame Zhao smiled and nodded, All right, go ahead and eat. Madame Zhao's heart ached for Su San Lang's hard work. She only wanted him to go eat quickly. He had been busy all day and there was no good food at home. How could he not be hungry? Su San Lang went out to eat. There was not much white rice in the meal, and it was almost all ground corn. He could not bear to eat too much of the vegetables, so he only scooped up a little soup to eat. After dinner, he asked the Su siblings to wash the dishes together. After cleaning the dishes, the three siblings could dig up the chestnuts buried in the fire pit to eat. Meanwhile, San Lang moved a small round wooden stool and started to weave grass. The weeds were dry, most of them could be used directly. The bottom layer had to be woven tight so that it wouldn't leak. He had been weaving for an hour when Chen Hu arrived. The two of them did not speak much and worked silently. When it was almost midnight, Su San Lang lowered his voice and said, Huzi, I'm stopping too, you should go back and rest too. He had urged Chen Hu several times, but Chen Hu refused to leave. He did not want to stop, but it was almost midnight. If Chen Hu did not leave, his body would not be able to take it tomorrow. Eventually, Su San Lang simply stopped. Chen Hu smiled and stopped as well. He said, San Lang, I'll go home today. I'll come back tomorrow. I might not be able to help you with the renovation, so I'll take the time to help you cut the grass and weave it. Chen Hu wanted to help more, but his parents would not agree. Su San Lang patted Chen Hu's shoulder. You don't have to be so formal with me. Go home and rest. Chen Hu was not his biological brother, but he was like one. After watching Chen Hu walk into the moonlight and return home, Su San Lang also packed up and returned to the house. As the ancients used to say, it was common to kick someone when they were down, but it was rare to offer timely help. Su San Lang would never forget Chen Hu's friendship. As soon as Su San Lang entered the house and lay down, he realized that Madame Zhao was still awake. He could not help but ask, Why aren't you asleep? Did Si Mei disturb you? Madame Zhao smiled and said, No, Si Mei is very obedient. San Lang, who must have come to help us? Su San Lang nodded. He reached out and gently touched the sleeping Su Xiaolu before lying down. He said, He'll help me fix the roof. It's been really sunny recently, so it might be cloudy soon. I'll go and bring some chestnuts back tomorrow and come back early. Then, I'll go and cut the weeds for the rest of the day. Huzi will come over and help me weave it at night. Then I can renovate our roof. It's been hard on you. Madame Zhao had too much sadness in her heart. In the end, she only said this. She was in confinement and could not help Su San Lang with anything. All the work at home had fallen on Su San Lang. If his two sons were smart, they could help. But they, as if he knew Madame Zhao's worries, Su San Lang gently reached out to stroke her hair and said, It's not hard at all. It's much easier than before. In the future, everything in our family will belong to us. When we're free, I'll go and cut some bamboo to weave baskets. Rich families often use them to carry things. Don't worry, our lives will get better and better. Since winter was coming, Su San Lang knew what Madame Zhao was worried about. Even if he was equally worried, he still tried his best to comfort her. In the past, you've never been in confinement. This time, you can rest for a full month. The medicine prescribed by Dr. Wu can last for a month. I'll get San Mei to brew it for you every day. In two days, I'll go and take a look at traps. Maybe we'll be lucky and catch something. Su San Lang stroked Madame Zhao's face and said gently, Madame Zhao was very thin, and the bones in her cheeks were sharp. Other than the fact that they had just been kicked out of their home, he had already accepted their fate. Although there was not much food, it could all enter their stomachs, in the previous house, their family had also never been full. Even if there was meat, it would not be theirs to eat, at least for now, whatever the family had, the family could eat. Okay, I'll listen to you, Madame Zhao leaned on Su San Lang, although their family was poor, their hearts had always been together. As Su Xiaolu woke up from peeing, she heard these conversations, she couldn't help but think that her father was a good person. Madame Zhao was in poor health, if she could rest for a month, it would be beneficial. She was happy to be in such a family. In her previous life, she had been an orphan, the old Chinese physician who had adopted her had said that he had picked her up. At that time, it was very common to favor boys over girls, and it was in time for family planning. Therefore, many people who were quietly pregnant and gave birth would see that the child was a daughter and quietly abandon her by the roadside. If someone picked the child up, she would live, if no one picked it up, she would be as good as dead. She longed for the warmth of her parents, but she also knew how cruel the world could be. Just because you had parents didn't mean you would feel warmth, whatever she didn't have in her previous life, she had in this life. 
If Madame Zhao had not carefully wrapped her up, she would have wanted to feed Madame Zhao spiritual spring water every day. That said, there was plenty of time, there was no hurry, the next morning, Su Sanlang was up before dawn. He warmed up the fire and started cooking before waking up Su Sanmei and her brothers. He instructed the three of them to eat a bowl of rice each before continuing to clean the well. He asked Su Sanmei to wash off the diapers that Simei had changed out of. Before leaving, Su Sanlang was most worried about his two sons, he patted their heads and said, Chong, Hua, don't go out and play, understand. You have to work with Sanmei, I'll bury chestnuts for you to eat tonight, okay? Su Chong and Su Hua recalled the fragrant chestnuts from yesterday. They had burned them in the ashes, and they smelt great. The two of them nodded obediently and agreed, yes, yes. Su Sanmei nodded obediently too, she entered the room and took out the diapers that Madame Zhao had changed out of Simei to wash them. Then, she poured the dirty water on the edge of the courtyard after Su Sanlang made arrangements for the three siblings, he carried the basket on his back and entered the mountain. Along the way, he went to see if he had caught anything in the traps, they were empty, and he could not help but feel a little disappointed. Fortunately, he had the chestnut tree, when he arrived at the tree, he cut down a small tree and started climbing. There were many knots in this tree, he should be able to sell it for a hundred coins, he still did not know about these things yet. In the past, his mother, Madame Wang, was the one who sold them, Madame Wang never said how much she sold them for. They were being left to die this time, hence, his family did not get a single cent, even if it was only worth a few coins, he would sell it. Ever since he had accepted the reality, Su Sanlang felt full of energy, after knocking down all the chestnuts on the tree, he carried home the ones that he could peel. The basket on his back was heavy, and Su Sanlang couldn't help but hurry home with a smile on his face. From a distance, he watched the children diligently cleaning the well, he smiled in relief. Seeing that Su Sanlang had returned home, the three siblings ran to his side happily and grabbed his hand, Father, Father, you're back. Su Sanlang rubbed their heads one by one and said with a smile, have you been obedient? Su Chong and Su Hua nodded happily, were very obedient, Su Sanmei let go of Su Sanlang and ran to the chicken coop. She quickly brought over a leaf bag and handed it to Su Sanlang as if she was presenting a treasure, Father, I caught a lot of insects for the chickens to eat. They all really like to eat these, Father, use this as bait, the chickens at home all like it, so the birds in the mountains will definitely like it too. Su's eyes sparkled, she was sensible enough to know that things were different at home, difficult. She'd thought of this when she was feeding the chickens, Su Sanlang took it and nodded with a smile, okay, father will listen to Simei, father will go out to cut the weeds after drinking some water, you have to be obedient at home, understand, Su Sanmei nodded happily, yes, yes, I'll take good care of big brother and second brother, Su Sanmei's obedience brought tears to Su Sanlang's eyes, he ruffled her dry hair and smiled as he entered the house, Madame Zhao heard Su Sanlang's voice and sat on the bed, when he came in to see Su Xiaolu, she said gently, San Lang, sit down and take a rest. As she spoke, Madame Zhao reached out and removed the leaves from Su San Lang's head. Her heart ached when she saw that Su San Lang's hand had many wounds from being pricked by the chestnuts. Su San Lang held the leaf bag in his hand and said, Our Simei is so capable. You helped feed the chickens and even caught many insects for me to use as bait in the trap. Madame Zhao smiled and said, Then you'll have to make another trip. Su San Lang smiled and said, It's just one more round. It won't take much effort. Su Sanmei had caught so many insects, he would be letting her down if he didn't make the trip. There was no bait in the traps he'd made. He thought it was up to fate that he hadn't caught anything, but she'd reminded him that birds love to eat these little bugs. The wild animals were more likely to be caught with bait. Su Sanlang looked at Madame Zhao. Su Xiaolu had woken up and was listening obediently and quietly. He smiled and spoke to Su Xiaolu. Simei, look at daddy. Su Xiaolu looked at Su Sanlang but not at his face. She was looking at the leaf bag in his hand. She could smell her urine. It was a little awkward. Did these bugs drink the dirty water her third sister used to wash her diapers? Su Xiaolu's sense of smell was very strong. Once she smelled something, she would remember it. A baby's urine did not have much of a smell, but she was surprised to smell the familiar scent of spiritual energy in the space. Although it was very faint, it did not escape her nose. Seeing that Su Xiaolu seemed to be interested in the leaf bag in his hand, Su Sanlang smiled and said, Simei wants to catch insects? Not now, when you grow up, I'll let your third sister take you to catch them, Simei, be good, I'm going out to work. After chatting for a while, it was time for Su Sanlang to go out. Madame Zhao wanted him to rest more. Su Sanlang smiled and said as he walked out, When I go out, I'll take a walk along the way and that would allow me to rest. Darling, rest well, if you're hungry or thirsty, call for Sanmei, helpless. 
Madame Zhao looked at Su Xiaolu gently and said, Si Mei, you must be filial to your father in the future. Your father is the best man in the world. Su Xiaolu looked at Madame Zhao's obviously better complexion and smiled at her. Wa, she had to. A man like her father was a rare commodity. He protected her when she was young. And she would take care of him when he got old. Madame Zhao's gaze was gentle. Su Xiaolu was clearly just a baby and could not understand anything. But every time she spoke to her youngest daughter, she could not help but be serious. Every time she looked at her youngest daughter's black and moist eyes, she felt that she understood. Every time she saw her youngest daughter open her mouth in an O shape or make a sound, she felt that it was her response. Madame Zhao leaned against the bed and patted Su Xiaolu gently to coax her to sleep. Madame Zhao smiled slightly. The room was bright and quiet. There were no curses nor noises. It was very quiet and comfortable. She could still hear the other three children clearing the well not far from the house. This was really good. Madame Zhao felt relieved at this moment. Su Xiaolu slept soundly while her consciousness went into the space to absorb spiritual energy. Su Sanlang followed the trail of traps, sprinkled some bugs into each one, and went to cut the weeds. He cut them for the entire afternoon and then picked them all back. He made dinner and started weaving the grass after he ate. Chen Hu came to help again. The two of them looked at each other and smiled. They did not speak much and weaved quietly. When it was almost midnight, Su Sanlang stopped what he was doing and patted Chen Hu on the shoulder. Hu, thank you. This is enough. You don't have to come tomorrow. Under the moonlight, Chen Hu smiled innocently and said, All right, I'll go home then. Brother, rest early too. Su Sanlang nodded and watched Chen Hu hop away. He tidied up the grass before going to rest. The 13th of August was the third day of their separation. Today, Su Sanlang did not go out. Instead, he began to prepare to renovate the roof. In the morning, he went to cut bamboo to make a ladder. Then, he carried Madame Zhao and Su Xiaolu next door and began to renovate the roof. He removed all the old and broken bamboo pieces on the roof and replaced them. When everything was done, he spread the woven grass and tied them together tightly. He then repeated the process layer by layer. He threw away the grass that couldn't be used and used it to start a fire. Su San Mei handed the grass to Su San Lang, and the father and daughter cooperated seamlessly. By the time it was dark, the roof had changed completely. Su San Lang came down from the roof after a tiring day and carried Madame Zhao and Su Xiaolu back. Now, the roof was opaque. Su Xiaolu praised her good father in her heart. He was too capable. Looking at their home, Su San Lang relaxed and took the three children to the fire to cook. The food was the same, but the family ate especially well. After the meal, Su San Lang was free for once. He pulled out a few of the chestnuts buried in the ashes and let the three siblings share the rest while he brought the medicine for Madame Zhao to drink. After Madame Zhao drank the medicine, he took out a chestnut and said, Darling, try this. The chestnuts buried in the ashes were fragrant and delicious. Su Xiaolu swallowed her saliva when she smelled the fragrance. Su San Lang peeled it for Madame Zhao, who was a little embarrassed. Su San Lang smiled and said, What are you waiting for? Eat. Madame Zhao ate the food that Su San Lang fed her in embarrassment. She said, San Lang, give it to me, I'll do it myself. Su San Lang focused on peeling the shell and said naturally, You don't have to dirty your hands, I'll peel it for you. Madame Zhao was touched. Separating from the family gave them freedom. Back in that house, Madame Wang would curse Madame Zhao every time Su San Lang looked her way. But now, all those curses were long gone. Madame Zhao belatedly thought that splitting up might be a blessing. Madame Zhao couldn't help but look at Su Xiaolu, who was swallowing her saliva. She smiled and said, Si Mei is a glutton, even if you want to eat it, I can't give it to you now. Su Xiaolu pursed her lips and thought, I know, I know, I'm still a baby, I understand. Su San Lang peeled the chestnuts and fed them to Madame Zhao one by one, even the air seemed to be sweet. At night, after the children had gone to bed, Su San Lang also went to bed. This night was the most peaceful one among the past few days. There was no need to worry about rain. On the 14th of August, Su San Lang planned to cut weeds for another day, preparing to thicken the roof of the house by two more layers. Everyone in the village could see his diligent figure. Every time Su San Lang was out of earshot, the people working the autumn harvest in the fields would gossip. Su San Lang would occasionally hear words like criminal sin, but he didn't care. In the afternoon, he looked at a piece of barren land. When walked over, he passed by that family's land. He saw old master Su working with Su Dalong and his family, as well as Madame Zhou, the leader, old master Su, lowered his voice and said coldly, all of you, work hard, don't look at those useless things. Everyone in the family knew what old master Su meant. So, no one looked up and acknowledged Su San Lang. Su San Lang didn't mind, 
but his eldest brother's youngest son, Shun, suddenly lost his temper. He swung the lawnmower in his hand and shouted at Su Sanlang angrily, Third uncle, why aren't you working? Why aren't eldest brother and second brother working? Why can they play but I can't? Su Chong and Su Hua had not been working for the past two days so they could play at home, he thought. In Su Shun's opinion, clearing the well and digging the mud was just a game. Su Dalong walked over and slapped his youngest son, Su Shun, and said, What are you shouting for? Hurry up and go back to work. Do you still want to eat or not? Su Shun felt extremely aggrieved after being slapped. He was not Su Chong or Su Hua, who could hold it in. He was furious and his face was red with anger. He wanted to cry but was slapped again. Su Sanlang stopped for a moment when he heard the shout. But soon he walked away without looking back. His heart had gone cold for that home. His father and brother did not even want to talk to him. They were probably afraid that he would shamelessly go and ask for food. Su Sanlang left without looking back. Su Shun was still sniffling and asked old master Su indignantly. Grandpa, father hit me. I didn't do anything wrong. Third uncle clearly didn't do any work. Old Master Su said sternly, Your third uncle's family has been separated. From now on, there's no third uncle in the family. Don't call him that in the future either. Stay away from those two fools. I'll send you and Qing to school next year. Don't tell those two fools in case you get led astray. You and Qing must study hard and bring glory to our Su family in the future. Old Master Su had high hopes for his two grandchildren and was determined to send them to school. Su Erlang tugged at his son, Su Qing, who was beside him. Qing, swear to your grandfather. Su Qing immediately stood up straight and looked at old master Su seriously. Grandpa, I swear that I will study hard and study hard to get scholarly honors. Su Dalong did not want to lose to his brother either. He tugged Su Shun, who was still sniffling. Shun, swear to your grandfather too. Su Shun was still angry, but when he saw his father's gloomy expression, he knew that he would be beaten up if he didn't say anything, so he copied Su Qing and swore too. Old Master Su nodded in satisfaction and said with a smile, All right, I believe you, get to work. Without the burden of the third branch at home, work was even more tiring. The effectiveness had clearly decreased over the past two days, so only Madame Wang and Madame Li were left at home to cook. Everyone had to go to the fields, and Madame Li and Madame Zhou would take turns cooking each day. Last night, Madame Wang was still nagging at old Master Su that if she had known earlier, she would have waited until the autumn harvest was over before separating the third branch. As she nagged, she could not help but curse Madame Zhao again giving birth at this time. Old Master Su did not feel good either. He had been paying attention to the movements over at Salong's house for the past few days. It didn't sit well with him to see Su Sanlang renovating the roof and taking charge. However, despite his discomfort, life at home still had to continue. He had separated the third branch to get rid of the burden, so the family's lives would get better and better. Su Sanlang quickly forgot about meeting his parents. He only had one goal, and that was to cut the weeds. Usually, after the autumn harvest, most people would cut some and bring them home to repair the family's cow sheet and so on. This was the time of year when the weeds were the best. Su Sanlang was also on time for it. He cut a large patch and saw old Wu coming down the mountain. He smiled and greeted, Dr. Wu, are you going to pick herbs? Old Wu glanced at Su and recognized him. When he reached Su, he simply sat down to rest. How is your wife? He asked. Su said gratefully, she's much better. She's been taking medicine for the past few days. And she looks better. Old Wu looked at the grass that Su Sanlang was cutting and said, I heard that you've been renovating the old house these past few days. These weeds are going to be gone in no time. Su Sanlang scratched his head, embarrassed. Yes, I had no choice. Old Wu smiled. What's there to be embarrassed about? This is ownerless to begin with. Anyone can cut it. Anyone who wants the weeds can take it. I was joking. When Su Sanlang cut the weeds, the villagers were indeed a little sore. This meant that if they wanted to get weeds, they would have to go further away. Su Sanlang scratched his head, unsure what to say. After Old Wu had rested, he carried the basket on his back and said, Come to my house tonight. I'll give you some insect-resistant herbs. You should crush them and sprinkle some on the grass appropriately when you lay it down. This way, your roof can last for several years. Su Sanlang was overjoyed. T this is great. Thank you, Dr. Wu. After thanking him, Su Sanlang looked troubled. B but I don't have the money to pay. Old Wu snorted and walked away without looking back. His arrogant voice entered Su Sanlang's ears. Who asked you for money? It's just a few bucks. I don't care for it. Although Old Wu was old, he walked steadily and quickly. Su Sanlang was both happy and touched. He shouted at Old Wu's back. Dr. Wu, thank you. With the insect-resistant herbs, his roof didn't have to be renovated every year. This was the second person who had come to his aid. 
After Old Wu left, Su Sanlang immediately continued cutting the grass. When he was almost done, he made two rounds to carry them all home. As for the well at home, all the smelly mud had been dug up by the three children, the silt at the bottom was already visible, and the water that flowed out had turned from black to yellow. With a little more cleaning, the water would be clear. When Su Saburo was cooking, he asked Su Sanmei to get medicine from Old Wu. When she brought it back, Su Sanlang realized that the medicine was already ground. He made a mental note of Old Wu's good intentions. After a simple binding, Su Sanlang climbed onto the roof. After scattering the herbs, he asked Su Sanmei and her siblings to hand over the grass and thicken the roof by two layers. That settled his mind. The renovation of the roof is now complete. After letting the three children wash up and sleep, Su Sanlang also returned to the house to sleep in peace. The 15th of August was a sunny day. It was also the Mid-Autumn Festival. In the village, the fragrance of meat wafted out from every house. The Mid-Autumn Festival symbolized reunion. After working hard for a long time, the autumn harvest was finally over. Su Sanlang also cut an extra piece of meat to cook. The rice at home was still ground gold and jade sticks mixed with rice. The meat was cut into cubes and added into the vegetable soup. They had eaten a portion of the vegetables from the separation a few days ago. The other portion had also been dried and stored for eating. The roof that worried him the most had been refurbished. Now, he could start preparing the fields and growing vegetables. In the morning, Su Sanlang took the three children to clear the well. With him around, the well was quickly cleared and the water became clean. Su Sanlang looked at the mud that had been cleared. Many of it had dried, and the weeds in these areas around him had been cleared. Father, come and see, quickly, at this moment. Su Sanmei's exclamation came from the chicken coop. Su Chong and Su Hua were attracted to the shout and had already run over. Su Sanlang came back to his senses and immediately walked over as well. Before he walked in, he heard Su Chong, Su Hua, and Su Sanmei's surprised voices. The hen laid an egg, Su Chong, Su Hua, and Su Sanmei were all surrounding the straw nest in the chicken coop. The only rooster and hen in the house had already quietly moved to the side and were clucking uneasily. Su Sanlang was just as surprised. The hen laid an egg? Su Sanmei picked up the egg with both hands and carefully handed it to Su Sanlang. Su Sanmei said happily, Father, can you cook it for mother? Su Sanlang took the egg and nodded. Yes, I'll make egg soup later. Let's drink it together. When the rooster and hen arrived, Su Sanlang could tell that the hen would not lay eggs for the time being. It was still very thin. He hadn't expected an egg in just a few days. He looked at the two chickens and realized that the hen seemed to have gained weight. Thinking of Su Sanmei's diligence, Su Sanlang couldn't help but stroke Su Sanmei's hair. Sanmei, you've worked hard, this is your credit. When your mother is out of confinement, the first egg the hen lays, I'll cook it for you. Su Sanmei smiled and nodded. Okay, she couldn't remember the smell of eggs, but they smelled good, they had to be delicious. Su Chong and Su Hua still didn't understand what the confinement period meant. They only remembered that Su Sanlang had said that they could have some egg soup that night. The two of them were practicing foolishly, as if wondering how to drink more of that. As his two foolish sons inhaled the air, Su Sanlang rubbed their heads helplessly. After cleaning up the well, Su Sanlang went to clean up the few acres of wasteland at the back of the house. He dug up the weeds and the ground, while Su Chong, Su Hua, and Su Sanmei followed him to clear out the grass. The family was happy, the afternoon was overcast and the weather had changed. He worked until evening and dug out an acre of land. He cleared out a large pile of weed poles and left them exposed to the sun. When the time came, he would burn them and scatter the ashes on the land. If he did this repeatedly, the land would become more nutritious. This piece of land had been abandoned for many years. In the past, his family had other lands and it took time to care for them. So old master Su did not work on this land. Now that this land was the source of his family's food, Su Sanlang worked hard on it. When they cooked that night, Su Sanlang cracked the eggs into egg soup. There was a little more soup so that all three children could have a small bowl. He brought the rest to Madame Zhao, who was a little surprised. San Lang, where did the egg come from? The hen that was distributed to the family should not be able to lay eggs. Su said with a smile, you fell asleep at noon and didn't know it. These eggs were laid by the hen at home today. Over the past few days, Sanmei had dug up a lot of insects to feed the chickens every day. So they are fattening up and are laying eggs again. Drink up. It's delicious. It was only an egg, but the fragrance was really strong. Madame Zhao looked at Su Sanlang and said, Sanlang, drink a few mouthfuls first. Su Sanlang quickly said, Why should I drink this? You're the one who really needs it. If not for the fact that it was not allowed now, he would have killed the chickens and fed them to Madame Zhao. Madame Zhao looked at Su Sanlang with determination in her eyes. If you don't drink it, 
then I won't drink it. Seeing how stubborn Madame Zhao was, Su San Lang had no choice but to take two sips. There was no oil and the soup was very light. But it was really delicious. The egg made it very fragrant. Su San Lang couldn't help thinking that this was probably the best egg he'd ever tasted. Su San Lang took two sips and refused to drink any more. Madame Zhao held the bowl and sipped. Su Xiaolu, who was awake, moved her mouth silently. The eggs smelled really good, but they also had a familiar scent. Thinking about how Su San Mei washed diapers every day and caught insects to feed the chickens. Su Xiaolu understood why. She drank spiritual spring water to absorb spiritual energy. So her feces were very nutritious. Su San Mei splashed the dirty water every day on the grass. So that patch of grass should be nutritious. The grass would fatten the insects. And the insects would be eaten by the chickens. Then, the chickens would lay eggs and the eggs would nourish the people. Everything in the world was such a cycle. Their chickens would definitely be delicious in the future. She really wanted to grow up quickly. Madame Zhao was stuffed. And so was Su Xiaolu. It was a cloudy day on the 16th of August. It looked as if it was going to rain. Su San Lang got up early to make breakfast and got ready to go out and chop wood. This time, he brought along Su Chong and Su Hua, leaving Su San Mei to watch the house and take care of Madame Zhao. Since Su San Mei was at home and Madame Zhao did not call for her, she went to catch bugs to feed the chickens. Every time she caught a bug, she was very happy. The rooster and hen could recognize her. When they saw her with something in her hand, they ran over happily. After she was done, Su San Mei went into the house to take a nap with Madame Zhao. She slept beside Su Xiaolu and smiled at her. Mother, Si Mei is so cute and obedient. Hearing the praises, Su Xiaolu was in a very good mood and smiled at Su San Mei. Su San Mei was thin, her face was yellow, and her hair was dry and frizzy. From this, it was obvious that her life was not easy. She could eat her fill after being separated from the family, but she was barely fed enough to survive in the past. Su Xiaolu could not help but pray that she could bring good luck to her family and make everyone healthy. Si Mei, I love you so much. Seeing Su Xiaolu's smile, Su San Mei couldn't help but kiss her. Su Xiaolu liked her genuine affection too. Kiss, kiss. Su San Mei leaned against Su Xiaolu and soon fell asleep. Madame Zhao looked at her two daughters with gentleness in her eyes. She had eaten and slept well these few days, and her health had improved day by day. With her two daughters by her side, she soon fell asleep too. At noon, Su San Lang returned with the two children carrying firewood. They drank some water and went back to work. It started to rain on their second trip back. When they reached the back room, Su San Lang said with a smile, This rain comes at the perfect time. It's cool and comfortable. Madame Zhao smiled and said, You've been working hard for so many days. It's raining, so you should take this opportunity to rest. Su San Lang sat down on the bed and teased Su Xiaolu. He pressed his tongue against the roof of his mouth and made silly noises. He said to Madame Zhao, Yes, I haven't used up the bamboo I cut. I'll cut them open and tidy them up later. I'll use them to make some things like dust pans for our family. Madame Zhao's heart ached. Thank you for your hard work. Su San Lang smiled. It's not hard. It's just a matter of moving my hands. Madame Zhao looked at Su San Lang. Their eyes met. Some things that did not need to be said. They understood everything in their hearts. Su San Lang patted Madame Zhao's shoulder gently and said, Our lives will get better and better. The chestnuts are almost dry. When we have enough firewood at home in a few days, I'll go to town to take a look.